Paradiso, Canto One. Summary. Dante has come to the very shores of heaven. Footnote. A note on the word heaven. When it is capitalized, it refers either to a specific sphere or to the Empyrean. When it is uncapitalized, and often in the plural, it refers to the whole sky as seen from earth, or the expanse in which the spheres turn. Having been cleansed by the waters of Lethe and Unoe, and with Beatrice as his guide, he is ready to rise. The poet Dante calls for divine aid in telling this final part of the journey, as he desires to rightly relate the wonders of heaven. As the pair stand on the top of Mount Purgatory, Beatrice gazes directly into the sun. Gazing at her, the pilgrim gathers enough strength to do the same. After looking into the light and returning his gaze to his guide, he senses that he has been transformed. Like Glaucus, who Ovid tells us ate a special coastal herb and was transformed into a sea god, able to dwell beneath the waves, so too Dante, having been baptized in light, is transformed into the type of being that can dwell in the spheres of heaven. Immersed in a new experience of sound and sight, the pilgrim is bewildered. Beatrice explains, Having been purified of sin, Dante's inclinations and affections are newly restored, and his innate desire for eternity is finally clarified and given wings through faith in Christ. Now, with the same orienting desire that draws fire up and earth down, Dante is drawn toward God. Without realizing it, he has begun his ascent through the celestial fire surrounding earth, upward toward the sphere of the moon. Having explained what Dante is experiencing, Beatrice turns her face back to the light of heaven. Canto One, Earthly Paradise. The glory of him who moves everything, penetrates the universe, and shines forth in one part more, while in another less. In that heaven that holds more of his light was I, and I saw things that no one knows nor can repeat who descends from above. For bringing itself near to its desire, our intellect is so deeply submerged, our memory cannot follow after. Truly, as much of that holy realm as I was able to treasure in my mind shall now become the matter of my song. O oh, good Apollo, for this final work make me the vessel of your worth required for the gift of the beloved laurel. Till this moment one yoke of Parnassus sufficed, but now both are necessary for me to enter the course that remains. Enter, therefore, within my breast and breathe as when you flayed Marcius, drawing him out from the sheathing of his own members. O virtue divine, if you but lend me so much of yourself that I might make clear the trace of that blessed realm marked on my mind, you will see me kneel at your cherished tree and crown me with the leaves of which both you and the matter will make me most worthy. So seldom, Father, does one gather them for the triumph of Caesars or poets, guilt and shame of humanity's desires. That the Penean bow ought to bring forth happiness in the happy Delphic god when it makes anyone thirst after it. A great flame follows after a small spark. From behind me, perhaps, with better voice, will one pray so that Syrah may respond. The lamp of the world rises on mortals at different points, but at that very place where four circles are joined with three crosses, it mounts with a better course, united with a better star, and tempers and seals the earthly wax more in its own manner. Almost this point had made it morning there, and here evening, and all that hemisphere was white, while the other region was black. When I saw Beatrice turn to her left, and look once again straight into the sun, never did eagle so fix itself there. And as a second ray is accustomed to leave the first and once more rise above, like a pilgrim who wishes to return, so by her posture, pouring through my eyes on my imagination, was mine made. Beyond want, I fixed my eyes on the sun. Much is granted there that to our powers here is not allowed, a gift of that place fittingly fashioned for the human race. Not long I endured, yet not so briefly I did not see it sparkle all around, like iron taken molten from the fire. And all of a sudden it seemed that day to day was added, as though that power had adorned heaven with another sun. Beatrice remained 
with her eyes wholly fixed on the eternal wheels, and I fixed my lights on her, withdrawn from up above. As I thus gazed on her, I was transformed within, as when Glaucus tasted the grass that made him friend to the gods of the sea. To transcend humanness cannot through words be expressed, and so for all for whom grace stores the experience, let this suffice. If I was only in that part of me, you made last, love, who governed the heavens, you know, who raised me up within your light. When the wheeling that you make eternal by being desired made me attend to it with the harmony you hone and arrange, so much of the heaven then seemed to me kindled by the fire of the sun that rain nor river ever stretched a lake so full. The newness of the sound and the great light kindled in me desire to know their cause, never before felt with such acuteness. Wherefore she, seeing me as I saw myself, to calm and quiet my excited soul, before I could inquire, opened her mouth and said, You make yourself heavy with false imagining, such that you do not see what you would if you had shaken it off. You are not on the earth as you believe, but lightning, fleeing its proper home, races not so fast as you who return to it. If I was divested of my first doubt by means of these brief and smiled little words, I was more snared within by a new one, and thus said, I had been resting content in greatest awe, but now am overawed at how I might pass through these airy spheres. Wherefore she, with a sigh of compassion, directed her eyes to me with that face a mother makes over her babbling son, and began, All things whatsoever have amongst themselves order, this is the form that makes the universe resemble God. Here the higher creatures see the footprint of eternal power, which is the end for which the norm just spoken of was made. In this order I speak of, all natures are inclined, through different dispensations, closer to or further from their first cause. Wherefore they themselves move toward diverse ports, over the great sea of being, each one with a given instinct to bear it across. This is what carries fire up to the moon. This is the motive force of mortal hearts. This grips and gathers the earth to itself. Nor does this bow shoot only those creatures deprived of intelligence, but also those who have both an intellect and love. The providence who so structures all things always quiets by his light the heaven that turns the one which has the greatest speed. And now to there, as to a place decreed, the virtue of that bowstring bears us up, aiming what it shoots toward a happy mark. It is true that, as the form oftentimes does not accord with the art's intention when material is deaf to respond, so too from this course sometimes the creature will depart, who has the power and thus readiness to bend toward another way. And just as one can see fire from a cloud fall, so the primal impulse drives it down to the ground, twisted by a false pleasure. Of no greater wonder, if I see right, is your ascent than when from high mountains a river flows down to the lowest point. It would be a marvel indeed if you, lacking hindrances, were seated below, like living flames lying quiet on the earth. Whereupon she turned her face to heaven.